It's great to see you guys. It's awesome to have those of us that are joining from our Zion online family. Can we keep our hands going for everyone that's tuning in online? We love you. We thank you so much for joining us today. If you're not in the room, uh, church is on fire today. Um, yeah. It took some faith to raise those hands and worship today, did it not? <laughs> Promise you guys we'll work with the district on getting some air conditioning going for this room, maybe get some fans for next week. But I also kind of like it. Maybe you don't. But sometimes I kind of like it. Sometimes I feel like a church experience gets a little too comfortable and cute. And uh, at times can be a little consumeristic in our, our Western American culture. And uh, sometimes I, I, it's not on purpose that stuff like AC goes out and, and all that. Like I'm not, I'm not celebrating that. This isn't some masochistic thing. But I think it's important for us to understand that any experience that's worth it to us, we're willing to make the sacrifice to lean into. Think about a concert where you're sweating and you're just loving it. It's because it's, it's worth it. Think about a sports game and it's loud and it's crazy and you're, you're yelling and you're sweating because it's, it's worth it. And I want you to know that being in the house of the Lord today, even without the AC working great, is worth it because one encounter with Jesus Christ can literally shift the course of your life. Church is not an institution. Church is the gathering where we worship God and believe that when his presence is here, anything is possible. So I want you to know that no matter what faith it took to get here, and no matter how uncomfortable at times it can be to be in a hot room, it's worth it because you're worth meeting with today. God wants to meet with you today. God wants to do something cool in your life. God wants to minister to your situation. And it's been so cool just e even hearing and seeing all the things that God has been doing lately in and through this body of believers and what he's been doing in this, this series. And I'm, I'm so, uh, man, I'm just so honored to be able to preach from the gospel of Luke. I believe today that whether you're an already follower of Jesus, God wants to awaken and ignite our faith in an upgraded way. I believe that, that to, in today's word, if you're not yet a follower of Jesus, perhaps you're a pre-believer. And the reason why I say pre-believer is because God's amazing and he loves you so much, he's chasing you down. And uh, we just believe that Jesus in his love will encounter you. It's, it's not a force kind of thing, but we just believe that, that he loves you so much that one day, perhaps today, you'll make a decision to follow him. But even if you have yet to make that decision today, I wanna invite you to lean into this passage of scripture that we're gonna read from the Gospel of Luke and take a glimpse at what it could look like for your life if you crossed the line of faith and said yes to Jesus Christ. Would you do that with me? Luke chapter nine, verse one says, one day Jesus called together his 12 disciples and gave them power and authority to cast out all demons and to heal all diseases. Then he sent them out to tell everyone about the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Take nothing for your journey, he instructed them. Don't take a walking stick, a traveler's bag, food, money, or even a change of clothes. And then in verse six, it simply says, so they began their circuit of the villages, preaching the good news and healing the sick. I wanna preach a message this morning if you're taking notes, and I do wanna encourage you to take notes today because I think there are gonna be some instructive things that we'll be teaching through. If you're taking notes, the title of the message today is I give you authority. 
I want to talk today about spiritual authority. Up until this point in Luke's gospel, the disciples had witnessed Jesus preaching with power and authority. In fact, the gospels tell us that everyone was wowed and amazed that Jesus is teaching because it was quite unlike the religious leaders of that day because Jesus' teaching was with real power and authority. The disciples had witnessed Jesus heal the sick. They had witnessed Jesus free the oppressed from demonic oppression. They had witnessed Jesus work miracles. Up until this point, they had witnessed demonstrations and manifestations of Jesus' power. But in Luke chapter 9, there is a shift where Jesus now turns to his 12 disciples and says, all of the things that you're witnessing, I now hand to you. I give you authority. I want to talk about spiritual authority. I want to talk about who you were made to be and who you can become as a follower of Jesus. Have you ever been in a situation, perhaps, at a hotel where you've had an amazing week at a hotel, but then at the end of the week, you, you looked on the counter by the TV and you opened up the pamphlet that they gave you at, at the front desk that, of course, you never read as they gave to you, and you realized at the end of your vacation that the entire time you had access to the free breakfast buffet. Someone said fire, yes. And you go, I could have filled myself, fueled myself with biscuits all day long for the entire vacation if only I knew what I had access to. What I'm getting at today is I wonder if you know what you have access to as a believer in Jesus Christ. I wonder if you know the power and the authority that has been freely given to you. I wonder if you know who you really are and what it means to be who you really are. I wonder if you know the kind of peace you can experience, the confidence that you can wake up and walk out the door with. I wonder if you know the kind of prayers that you can begin to see answered on an everyday basis. I wonder if you know the bodies that can be healed through a prayer of faith upon the name of Jesus. I wonder if you know the minds that can be restored if you were to believe that Jesus cared about mental health and mental wholeness. I wonder what your life would look like. I wonder what would happen if we knew how much Jesus wanted to restore marriages and families and reverse generational cycles of addiction and hopelessness. I wonder what, how our cities could be changed if we knew the authority and the power that has been given to us. Today I want to talk about doing the Jesus stuff on an everyday basis as if it were normal Christianity. Did you know that the early church operated in the way that we just read in Luke chapter 9 as normative, not abnormal? See, a lot of times when we read a passage like Luke chapter 9, there's a theological and experiential challenge or a tension that exists where we see that Jesus, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, gives his 12 disciples, the original disciples, pow his power and his authority to heal the sick, to cast out demons, and to preach and teach the kingdom of God, the good news of the kingdom. And we go, that's great for them, but not for me. He said it for them, but he didn't say it for me. 
Well, in fact, we have to read another chapter after. In Luke chapter 10, just one chapter later, he did not just say it to the 12 original disciples. He now gathers 72 disciples in Luke chapter 10. And he gives them the very same commission with the very same power and authority. In fact, they come and they report back. They go, hey, Jesus, it's crazy. It worked. We used your name and even the demons obeyed. And he's like, I know. That's like why I gave it to you. And he goes, that's really cool. But don't get so excited about the manifestation and the results of it. Get excited that the inbreaking kingdom of God is happening. Souls are being saved and that your names are registered in the kingdom of God. Because it's always about the gift. It's always about the giver and not the gift. The gift is a byproduct. He doesn't just tell the 72 disciples to live with his power and authority and exercise it to bring his rule and reign on planet earth. Your kingdom come, your will be done. He actually says to all believers in John's gospel, he says anyone present, future, who believes in me will do the what? Same works and even greater works in scope because we're a church and we're not just 12, we're not just 72, but it's now billions of believers. You'll do the same works and even greater works and you can ask for anything in my name according to my power, my position, and my authority, and it will be done. And the early church did not base their everyday Christianity on a philosophy. They based it on a person. They chose to live like Jesus. And that's our mission at Zion Church. We're all about Jesus. We're not religious people. We're Jesus people. So if Jesus taught it, if Jesus lived it, and if Jesus gave it and promised it to us, we embrace it. We lean into it. I wonder what would happen if you embraced the Jesus life. I wonder what would change around us if we stepped into the Jesus stuff. In order to do so, if you're note takers, there are three foundational truths that we must understand. Three foundational truths that we must understand if we wanna step in to the life that Jesus made possible. And the first truth is this, is that you were born into a battle. Ephesians chapter six tells us that we don't wage war. Spiritual warfare is not about um, the stuff that we see. It manifests eventually in seen things and in the brokenness in the seen world, but it actually begins as a spiritual battle, a spiritual warfare. That we wage war against unseen realities. The evil authorities and powers in the dark world against evil spirits in heavenly places. And, and, and here's what the enemy does. The enemy wants to wage war against everything that is valuable to God in your life. So the enemy is not fighting God because he knows that that isn't a fair fight. I just want you to know that. Like the devil and God are not equals. So what the devil does is the devil fights against God's kids. And he's not fighting for your past. He's fighting for your future. He wants to keep you from God's best for your life. And so he'll do everything he can. John 10, 10 tells us to steal, kill, and destroy. And I just have to anchor into this moment because you'll never desire to live with the power and the authority of Jesus if you don't feel like you need it. You were born into a battle. I just need you to know that. You were born into a spiritual war. And, and, and let me just tell you, and you can likely feel the effects of this, or you see the, the effects of this, 
is that the enemy is not dumb. The devil is strategic and intentional. And we as a church and we as believers cannot be casual when the enemy is being intentional. He's making a strategic plan to attack your mind, to get you into places of doubt and discouragement and depression. He wants to attack your marriage and rip you apart. He's attacking areas of, at times, finances to try to tell you that God is not your provider, that God will not be faithful, that God will not come through in your future, that he's not an on-time God. He's a too-late God. The enemy will attack us uh, in our society through school systems and through politics, and there are principalities and there are powers. The enemy is at war against us because he is afraid of what it would look like if believers actually embraced their spiritual authority to do battle against him. So he doesn't want you to know who you are and what it means to be who you are. The first foundational truth is that you're born into a battle, but here's the great news, and the second foundational truth is that Jesus has already won. So although we're born into a battle, Jesus 2,000 years ago has already won the war. We live in the already but not yet kingdom. Here's what Jesus did on the cross. Colossians chapter 2 said that as Jesus died on the cross, the enemy had thought that he had won. Because the enemy did not know the future. He does not know the future like God. He's not omnipresent, omniscient. He doesn't, he's not all-knowing. He doesn't know past, present, and future. So he thought he defeated Jesus Christ and his mission on the cross. But three days later, he did not know that Jesus would come back from the dead with the keys of hell, death, and the grave, not just as the suffering Savior, but as the victorious King. He did not know that Jesus would be ascended into heaven and is now seated as king on a throne and now has all authority and all power in heaven and on earth. You were born into a battle, but rest assured, Jesus has already won. In fact, it says that as he did this in Colossians chapter 2, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. Talk about the ultimate flex. It's amazing. Sometimes I feel like in life we're, we're trying to chase victory down. And I want you to know that you don't have to chase victory down. Victory already chased after you 2,000 years ago in the form of a man named Jesus Christ who took on your flesh. He took on your sin. He took on your story. He lived a spotless, sinless life so that you could have his righteousness. And I want you to know what you have. This is the foundation and the fuel for the power and the authority that you get to live with. Because of Jesus, 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, if anyone is in Christ, if you have said yes to Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone and the new is here. What does it mean to be a new creation? It means that you are sinless, spotless, blameless, guiltless, shameless, perfect, holy, righteous, pure, powerful, eternally forgiven, free, victorious. Can I get a witness in this room? I know it's hot, but let's make it hotter for one moment. Somebody shout me down. That's who you are. You are a victor in Jesus Christ. And some of us 
are living like fiats when you're true Ferraris on the inside because you got the spirit of Jesus Christ that lives inside of you. He's a tiger, and it's like he's trapped in a cage. He's not meant to be a domesticated animal for you to look at or for you to talk about one time a week in a hot room. He's supposed to be unleashed out of a cage and flow through you because rivers of living water need to flow through you for a world that's desperately thirsty and dry that needs hope, healing, and restoration. Jesus did not save us and free us for us to simply receive salvation. He saved us and he freed us and he filled us with his spirit to apply his victory to every situation. This is where your spiritual authority comes from. It doesn't come from your perfection. It doesn't come from your performance. It comes from the victory of Jesus. The blood shed on the cross, the empty tomb, and the risen king. By the way, you have both positional authority and delegated authority. Positional authority means that you once... We're not a child of God, and you, not, and you now are an adopted son and a daughter of the king. You have a new spiritual position. And when you're a son and a daughter in the family, you barge into the front door, you rip open the fridge, and you access everything that's in it. And some of us are living bored lives We're living mundane lives in our Christian faith because we aren't aware of what we have access to, and we're not taking advantage of it. This is the reason why Jesus said, when you pray, pray, Father in heaven, you're holy, you're awesome, you're amazing. May may your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And how does Jesus want to bring his kingdom to earth? Through you. So what's in heaven right now? You can shout it out. Shout something that you believe is in heaven right now. Peace. You get access to peace. You get access to wholeness. What else? Yeah. Yeah. You get access to relationships. What else? Joy, right? There is joy available for you in heaven. There is joy available for other people that are hopeless. What else? Health, exactly. When there is sickness, when there is disease, when there is brokenness, there is health. There's perfect health, healing in heaven. Freedom, when people are are struggling with addiction and bondage, there is freedom available. Everything that exists in heaven, Jesus says, I don't hoard it for my kids. The fridge is wide open. You have access to it. And it's not just for you, but it's for the world around you that desperately needs it. That's the reason why Jesus commissioned his disciples. Go, heal the sick. Go, free the oppressed. Go, speak to the condition." Go, share the good news to people who are filled with bad news. Go and become like me and apply my victory to every and any situation. See, the reality is is that we have victory but also authority. And you have delegated authority from Jesus Christ to bring his kingdom realities to every hopeless, hurting, helpless, desperate situation that you face. And I guess my question is, is, is are we taking advantage of the power and the authority that God has given us? It's one thing to know your identity, that you're a new creation in Jesus Christ, that, that you're not going to hell, but you're going to heaven. A lot of Christians know their identity, but very few live with Christ's authority. And you wonder, why am I bored in my faith? 
Why, why is my mind drifting in this message and I'm just thinking about stuff afterwards? <laughs> Nobody's doing that. Why, why am I disconnected? Why do I feel dull? Why am I continually frustrated? Why, do I, 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 why does it just seem like the same stuff keeps happening over and over in my life? Because authority is not a concept to be appreciated. Your spiritual authority must be exercised in order to see the results that come from it. I know this is a simple analogy, so forgive me for the simple analogy, but um, let's say you have a gym membership, or let's say you went on Amazon and you bought a bunch of home workout equipment. That's amazing that you have it and you have access to it, but if you do not use the equipment, if you do not exercise Where's Trizzle Man at? You will never see the results. The difference between certain followers of Jesus and other followers of Jesus is not in our level of spirituality. It's in our level of obedience. See, Sometimes we look at people and we're like, man, that person just has that special gifting, that special anointing, man. It just feels like there's like favor on their life. It just feels like when they pray, like heaven comes down. It just feels like when Taryn speaks, there's just this like power and this authority. And man, like I'm never going to be like that. And, and, and people are so much more spiritual than me and I don't have that ability. No, the only difference is your mindset and your obedience, the spiritual authority that you have must be exercised in order for you to see the results. There are people in this room that have experienced and witnessed bodies that have been healed because they have exercised and applied the authority of Jesus Christ into that situation. People in this room that have experienced freedom in their minds from anxiety and depression and for their friends because they have exercised and applied the authority that's found in the name of Jesus Christ, the one who brings hope, the one who says there is light at the end of the tunnel, the one who brings healing. There are people in this room that were in a desperate financial situation, but they exercised their faith and they confessed, I may not see it right now, but I know that you are still Jehovah Jireh, and you will bring provision, and they have experienced blessing and abundance because they have exercised their conviction and confession upon the authority of the name of Jesus. The difference is not in the family we were raised or how spiritual we think we are. The only difference is your decision to apply the victory of Jesus Christ over your situation. That's it. In order for us to experience the life that Jesus made possible, we have to exercise the authority that he's given us to speak to any helpless hopeless, seemingly impossible situation and declare upon the name of Jesus. And why is it important to declare the name of Jesus? Well, first of all, because Jesus told us to do it. Jesus said, use my name. Use my name. I give you authority. All authority in heaven on earth is given to me. And, and you're going to do the same works that I do and even greater works. Um, ask for anything in my name. Because in a name, there is identity attached. In a name, there is a position attached. In a name, there is power attached. In a name, there is history attached. In a name, there is future attached. When there's a name that exists in the universe that is the same name yesterday, today, and forever, there's power in a name. When, when Kellen was born, he was completely black and blue when he came out and he wasn't breathing. And for those four and a half minutes, when the code blue was hit in the hospital room and it was silent in that room as it felt like the entire hospital rushed in, all I knew what to do was to declare in the name of Jesus, breath come into his lungs. Upon the authority of Jesus Christ, breathe, Kellen. 
in the name of Jesus because we were born into a battle. Whatever the enemy's trying to do to rob him from his future, I declare upon the authority in the name of Jesus, the one who is risen, the resurrection power of Jesus, life in his body. And as that four and a half minute hit, we heard the first cry from our son, Kellen, because there is power when you exercise the name of Jesus. Demons flee. The enemy bows. There is real power. I'm not just talking fluff. I'm not just giving you a hype motivational speech. There is spiritual power that Jesus paid for on the cross. And he gives it to all believers, not to just people with microphones or instruments. That's the reason why in Luke chapter 9, he gathered all 12 disciples and he gave them his power and his authority. He gathered Thomas, the doubter, and he gathered Judas, the betrayer, and he still gave them his power and his authority. Jesus promises, anyone who believes in me will do the same works, and as a unified church globally, you will do greater works, and the world will know that I am the hope, I am the answer, I am the way, truth, and the life, not because you're talking about it on a Sunday, because you're doing my stuff Monday through Saturday. Man, I'm preaching better than you're responding. I love you. I bet you're responding online. I see you hopping in your PJs online. Where do we start? Well, your sphere of influence is the beginning place for your, your place of authority. Um, really cool. I was, I was talking with a friend of ours, and uh, she said that she had a conversation with someone who's in a pretty uh, hurtful and hopeless situation, and she just felt impressed by the Spirit to, to do something new. Instead of just praying for God to be with that person, Give comfort. Hey, I'll just pray that God will be with you. By the way, we don't need to pray for God to be with people. He's already with people. <laughs> what would it look like to like level up our, our prayers? What would it look like to actually speak to the situation? And she just felt impressed by the Spirit. Like, hey, I'm just, I saw I, Jesus does this. Like, let's just pray and believe that the kingdom can come. And, and in that in the middle of that moment, instead of waiting and saying, hey, maybe I'll pray, maybe I won't, she paused and did a pray now kind of thing. And it was a powerful spiritual moment that two believers shared together, one person going through a really hopeless situation. And then as she shared that with our group of friends, she had so much joy, she had so much confidence, and she was like, she was like, it's done something in my, my faith. Like the, I could tell the thrill factor in her faith had gone way up because every single time we walk through the awkward door, we get into the awesomeness of Christianity. And when we activate our faith, when we do the Jesus stuff, when we activate the power and exercise the authority of Jesus right there, right then in any situation, we begin to step into the adventure of faith that Jesus has for us. This whole thing is not about a religion. It's not about just more head knowledge. God wants you to have fun following him. And let me tell you, the fun is on the other side of the fear. Because when you read, like, Jesus is like, hey, I give you power to, like, cast demons out. You're like, whoa, not for me. Right? That's how I respond to it. That's for those, like, weird, kooky, spooky people. What if it was, like, naturally supernatural? What if it was, if, if someone was struggling? Because it's a spiritual battle with physical, mental, emotional, relational implications. But it's a, it's, it's a spiritual battle at its root. What if the next time we had conversations with people that were struggling or hopeless, were being attacked by the enemy, were being victimized and oppressed, 
we were not okay with it? What if we were not okay with it right there? What if it was as normal as just being not okay with it and saying, not today, Satan? We're going to pray right now in the name of Jesus. Whatever is coming against you has to flee, has to leave, has to get out in Jesus' name. You have no power. You have no authority. We do not make agreements with who you are. We declare that the kingdom of God is coming. We declare that lightness is coming in your mind. We declare that freedom is coming in your body. We declare that you're going to go to sleep different tonight. And I declare, we, do, we agree in faith right here that you're going to wake up, not with a pit in your stomach anymore. You're going to wake up with joy and with hope and with faith and with confidence? What if it was normal to act that way? What if it wasn't weird? You have to step through the threshold of the awkward door to get to the awesomeness of Christianity. This is when stuff gets really fun, when you just simply follow Jesus and you apply his victory and his authority to every situation in any way and with every person, you will start seeing the results of answered prayers. You will start seeing bodies healed. You will start seeing minds restored. You will start seeing marriages reunified. You will start, we will start seeing a city ignited. We will start seeing revival in our region that will point to the love and the good of Jesus Christ. Not because we're extraordinary, but because we're not. And we simply trust Jesus at his word. I love that last part in Luke chapter 9 where it says, take nothing for your journey. Jesus is like, you don't need all that you think you need. All you need is me. Nothing plus Jesus is all that you need for every situation. All you need is me. All you need is belief in me. All you need is faith. This is what, that's why childlike faith is so amazing. All you need is me. Trust in my name that carries my power and my authority. Believe and have faith that I will show up and do what you can do and trust that God will do what you can't do. What would it look like if this did not just stay in here, but got out there. The main street that runs through the city of, what, what if we just started in our sphere of influence? Because you are given authority to take territory. I wanna say that again. You are given authority to take territory. There are, the, the enemy has squatters all over our city all over our lives. And let me just tell you, he has no rights. Because of Jesus Christ on the cross, the only rights that the enemy has is when we agree with him, when we allow him to squat, when we allow him to reside in our minds, in our homes, when we allow him to reside in our workplaces, when we allow him to reside in our our. our our secret lives, when we allow him to squat, that's the only authority that he has. But in the kingdom of God, he has no rights. In California, squatters may have rights, but not in the kingdom of God. Because Jesus said, all authority has been given to me. What would it look like if this city increasingly, increasingly looked more like the kingdom of God? El Camino Real is the main street that runs through our city. And um, I looked it up in Spanish because I don't speak Spanish. But Google says that in English, El Camino Real means the king's highway. And I just have always believed before we planted this church, and man, I feel it in the house today. I feel it in this movement today. I feel it in what God's doing not because we're special, but because we're, we, we just want to follow Jesus. We're just passionate about Jesus. I just feel, what would it look like if San Clemente, which is typically categorized as a sleepy surf town, 
became known as the king's town. That's the place where the king shows up. That's the place where the children, children of God, sons and daughters of the king, have retaken territory. That's the place where you go to when you need healing in your body. That's the place you go to when you need restoration in your family. That's, that's the city where, where healings are breaking out, where deliverances are breaking out. That's the city where revival is breaking out because it's the king's highway. It's the king's city. It's not the devil's playground. It's the king's region. What would it look like for you to trade in your Fiat for a Ferrari today? Because you've been living this life where you believe in your identity, but you're not living with the authority and the power. You're a supercar in the slow lane on the highway. And God is saying today is the day where you blow the carbon out. Today is the day where you trust in me, where you take a step and you follow me. Today is an upgraded kind of day in your faith where you believe that you actually were saved to not just sit in a seat, but to make an eternal difference in the lives of others. Today is your day. I know it's hot in here, so let's close our eyes. And, and I do believe it's a sacred moment. And before we leave, I have to offer an invitation because I just, I know that God loves you way too much to let you walk out without an invitation to be in relationship with him. This. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day where a, 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 a brand new story can start, whether you're watching online or you're here in the room. God loves you more than you could ever imagine. And he sat you down for a few moments so he could meet with you and he could tell you that there is so much more for your life. You don't have to live bored. You don't have to live... A prison, as a prisoner of guilt and shame and sin anymore. You don't have to hate yourself. You don't have to wrestle with the lies from the enemy that keep telling you to give up on life. You don't have to be full of loneliness. You can find your life in Jesus Christ and experience salvation and freedom and wholeness. Eternal life can begin now and take you all the way into the next life. And that offer stands for you today. Jesus Christ died on the cross 2,000 years ago because you were worth it. He took on your sin, your guilt, and your shame, and he paid for it all. It's all covered. The bill has been paid. Access has been granted. Now you get to swipe the card without having to worry about any of the payments. It's already been paid. And he invites you into this amazing family called the church because you don't have to do life alone. And he wants to rewrite your story and give you a fresh start today. I'm gonna count to three and ask you to raise your hand when I say three. I'm gonna ask you to shoot it up high and shoot it up boldly. Today's an activated day. God meets you in your faith and in your boldness. One, I want you to know that Jesus loves you more than you could ever imagine. Two, you are here on purpose today for this very reason. So one, two, three, if that's you, shoot up your hand and say, I give my life to Jesus and today's my day. There's no going back. Yeah, I see that hand. I give my life to Jesus. Keep it up high. I see that hand right there. I give my life to Jesus. I see that hand. I see that hand. I see it. I see it. Today, yep, I see it. I see it. Jesus, today's my day. I give my life to you. Yeah, if you'd put your hands all the way up again, I want to pray for you. This is between you and God, and this, <laughs> this is real. I just want you to know that. This is real. With your hand raised high, you just pray in your heart with me. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Jesus, thank you for saving me through your shed blood on the cross. Thank you, Lord. You took it all. You gave all of yourself for me, so today I give all of myself to you. Today I believe and I confess that you died and you rose again. And I give you my life, every piece of my life. I put it in your hands and I trust you. And I believe that today will be a marking moment and I will never be the same because today I declare I am saved. Let's all put our hands together. 
and welcome everyone that crossed the line of faith. Would you stand to your feet? Stand to your feet all over this place. And I know it's late, and I just want to invite Taryn up. I feel like yeah. God's put a, a, something on your heart. Because can we just celebrate one more time? I mean, so many hands went up. People, That's a real thing. People crossed the line of faith. And if you made a decision to follow Jesus online, please comment. Please, please let us know. But I do believe that there's one more call for a believer. Like God is activating his church today. And I just, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like you've got something. Come on now. Hey. I didn't know I had it until he said I had it. I'm like, okay, let's roll. Um, yeah, if that's you and you're like, I want an upgrade. I want to leave awakened. I want to leave walking out filled and full of the authority that I've been given access to. I want to commission you. Would you just lift both of your hands up and I'm going to pray over you. And in the name of Jesus. I command the spirit of fear to break off of your people. In the name of Jesus, I command the spirit of apathy to break off of your people. In the name of Jesus, I break off the spirit of intimidation. And I just declare that the spirit of God that is in you would be released out of you. I thank you, Jesus, for divine appointments not four days from now or a week from now, but I thank you, God, that you're gonna put people in our path today. And by your spirit, God, we are gonna lay hands on the sick and we are gonna see them healed in Jesus' name. We are gonna cast out demons in your name, Jesus, because we have been given all 